outstretched arm. His love endures forever. For the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. Forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever. From the rising to the setting sun, His love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on, His love endures forever, sing Spirits and rushing wind, fire of God fall within. Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revive a land of smoldering. Breath of God, fan us into of heaven, pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out, Ooh. for hearts that burn Power of your prayer. 
great this love Oh, it's moving on my mountains This perfect love It's casting out my fear How great this love Oh, it welcomes me like family And anywhere I go It meets me Cause he is good And he is God But what I earned It's not what I got And he is just Yet oh so kind What I deserve It's not what I find What more could I say about my God is love How great this love Oh, it's faithful through my failures This trusted love is with me till the end How great this love Oh, it's closer than a brother this is love, he died so I could live, and he is good, and he is God, what I earn, it's not what I got, and he is just, yet oh so kind, what I deserve. It's not what I find What more could I say about him? My God is love And he is love I know my God is love I know my God is love this is enough to know my God is love. I know my God is love. I know my God is love. This is enough to know my God is love. I know my God is love. I know my God is love. This is enough to know. And he is God What I earned It's not what I got And he is just Yet oh so kind What I deserve It's not what I find What more could I say about him My God is love what more could I say about him? My God is love. What more could I say about him? My God is love.
Greetings to everyone watching this worship service from home as we share the good news of life and salvation in Jesus Christ. Trusting that Christ is present in all times and in all places, we will celebrate virtual communion later in the service. All are welcome to participate. If you'd like to do so, I invite you at this time to gather some form of bread and some form of wine or grape juice, and I'll offer further instructions later in the service. If you'd like to follow along with the words of our congregational confession, prayers, and songs, bulletins are available on our website, St. 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 John's Lutheran. Church. And now I invite you to worship the God who is with us and for us forever. Oh my. 
we join together in our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. To you, O God, all hearts are open. To you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of word and sacrament in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in prayer. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over evil in the strength of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 15. Immediately after Adam and Eve eat the forbidden fruit, they hide from God. Neither takes responsibility for their sin, instead blaming each other, the snake, and even God. The curse on the snake was understood as a messianic prophecy by the early church, who associated Eve's offspring with Christ. The reading. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between you and offspring and her and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The psalm is uh, Psalm 130. Wait for the Lord, for the Lord there is steadfast love. The reading. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet, yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption, for the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13, uh, verses, uh, 13 through chapter 5, verse 1. Life in the present is, a transitory, is transitory and cannot compare with the eternal home God has prepared for us. So we do not despair no matter what life might bring, 
because we know that as God raised Jesus from the dead, God promises to bring us into eternal life. The reading. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the Lord, to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what we can not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what, cannot, for what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Thank you, Laura. Our gospel reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, the third chapter, beginning with the 20th verse. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of demons, he casts out demons. And Jesus called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Here ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. How do you see Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? And how would you or have you described Jesus to your loved ones? There are at least three distinct visions of Jesus in our gospel reading for today. Mark, the author of the gospel, declares his view of Jesus right from the start. Mark 1.1 1, 1 states, The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the gospel narrative goes on to recount the public ministry of Jesus in which he demonstrated he is the Son of God, 
the second person of the Trinity, the God of all creation in the flesh, embodying the good and life-giving power and authority of the God who made us and loves us forever. Already by this point in the gospel narrative, Jesus has demonstrated power over demonic forces, freeing a man with an unclean spirit. Jesus has demonstrated power over illness, healing Peter's mother-in-law. He's demonstrated power in his teaching, astonishing the crowds with the authority of his words. Jesus has demonstrated his authority over the law, healing and feeding people on the Sabbath, the holy day of rest, according to the commandments. And Jesus has demonstrated his authority to forgive sins, forgiving the sins of a man who had been paralyzed and then healing him. And while all of this has brought incredible good into the lives of people in need, it has also brought Jesus into conflict with religious and political and social authorities, like the scribes, who, it seems, want all the power and authority for themselves. And so earlier they have accused Jesus of blasphemy, of disrespecting God, because only God can forgive sins. And they are partly right. Only God can forgive sin. But they fail to recognize that Jesus Christ is God. And the religious authorities have also accused Jesus of breaking the law because he healed and fed people on the Sabbath. They have also, by this point, questioned why he is partying with his friends while the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting and why he's hanging out with sinners. In our gospel reading for today, the religious authorities acknowledge that Jesus has been freeing people from demonic forces, but refusing to acknowledge that Jesus' power is from God, they say that Jesus' power has come from God's enemy, from Beelzebul, a Philistine deity, a false god, the prince of hostile powers also called Satan, the adversary, the accuser, the father of lies, also called the devil. Names for that which is evil, destructive, opposed to God and God's good will. And it is by this name that the religious authorities call Jesus Christ. Jesus responds with a parable that is also a compelling logical argument. How can Satan stand against Satan? How can evil effectively act against evil? A house divided against itself cannot stand. Words quoted by Abraham Lincoln as he began his journey to help set people free. And then Jesus continues with a metaphor in which perhaps Satan is the strong man attempting to keep humans captive in his house. And Jesus is the one who can tie up Satan, tie up the strong man and plunder the house and set humanity free. Jesus Christ has and will overcome evil. In his life, death, and resurrection from the dead, in his ongoing presence with us, he has forgiven our sin in his redemptive grace. He has freed us from death forever and given us life eternal. His powerful healing love will outlast the pain and suffering of this fallen world broken by human sin. One day, Jesus Christ will come again and make all things new, 
make all things well, make all things whole. Christ is with us always. He is true. He is good. He is Lord. And the religious authorities who accuse him of being the opposite, who say that he is doing these things by an unclean spirit, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, which has become known as the unforgivable sin, something that has caused some people, myself included in my younger days, some sleepless nights wondering if we had somehow committed it. So let me offer you these words of assurance from Pastor David Lose. It seems that this sin revolves around rejecting God's good work in Christ as the work of the devil, failing to recognize God's Messiah, rejecting the new revelation of God in Christ, refusing to acknowledge the work of the Spirit of God to renew and redeem creation. These are what most scholars think Jesus is naming here. The sin Jesus seems to name is an ongoing, even permanent refusal to be open to the movement of the Spirit. You can't sin in this way by accident. In fact, what Jesus is talking about is less something you do, an action or word, and more of a complete way of being, living in utter rejection of God. So if you're at all worried about committing this sin, I can assure you that you haven't. It's not that Christ would have refused to forgive their sin. Of course he would. It's that they refused to acknowledge their need to be forgiven. They failed to repent, to change their hearts and minds and believe the good news. Their moral sense was so inverted that they saw the good of Jesus Christ and called it evil. It's heartbreakingly ironic that these men who claim to know God failed to see God in Christ right in front of them. And while the religious authorities say that Jesus is acting from demonic forces, others are saying that Jesus is crazy. In response to those who are saying that Jesus is out of his mind, his family, his mother and his brothers, come to take him away, presumably pull him from the crowds and take him home to talk some sense into him. Mark doesn't note specifically how these claims started, that Jesus is out of his mind, or the motivations of his family in coming to get him. Perhaps they really believe that he is unwell. Perhaps they're afraid for his safety. Perhaps they want to protect the family reputation. Whatever their motivations, Jesus doesn't go with them. Instead, he says that those who do the will of God are his family. This may seem harsh, but it's important to note that Jesus is not rejecting his family. He loved his family. As he was dying on the cross, Jesus made sure that his mother and his beloved friend cared for each other. And Jesus' brother James would later become a leader in the church in Jerusalem. This is not Jesus rejecting his family. This is Jesus expanding the definition of family beyond biological connections to include the beloved community of disciples who know and love him and each other, who trust that he is sane and knows what he's doing, who call him Lord. This is Jesus creating a community of people who are connected not simply by genealogy or history or background or nationality or ideology. They are united in Christ. 
by the Holy Spirit, working in and through us to do the good work that God has called us to do, to stand against and speak against evil, to proclaim the good news of life and salvation in Jesus Christ. This is Jesus forming the church. And as members of the church community, family of Christ, may we follow his example. May we do what is true and good, even if others call it false and evil. May we give of ourselves to heal and feed others, even if people call us crazy. May we live the good news of life in Jesus Christ, our true, good, sane, powerful, living, loving Lord. Amen. shall reign where the sun does its successive journeys run his kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moon shall wax and We join in confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for your church throughout the world. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your good news with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to appreciate the natural world with reverence, that we may treat it with care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations and peoples. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear, that we may work with one another for the common good. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Strengthen us with your presence. Renew us with your spirit. Especially today, we pray for those whom we name silently in our hearts or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we place ourselves and our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we continue to care for the physical and spiritual needs of our community, we continue to be deeply grateful for your financial support. There are a couple ways you can give. You can go on our website, stjohnslutheran.church, and click on the Give button in the top right corner. You can also mail a check to us here at the church. Our mailing address and additional information is available on our website, again, stjohnslutheran.church. Please give as you feel called and able to do so, and know that any amount you give is deeply appreciated.
At this time, as we come into communion with Christ and with one another, I invite you to gather the bread and the wine or grape juice. I will offer the words of institution, and then we will sing the Lord's Prayer together. And then after that, I will invite you to take and eat and take and drink. And I'll pause to allow all members of the household time to partake of the elements. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we sing the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this To take and eat the body of Christ given for you. I invite you to take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us all of our days. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few announcements as we bring this morning's worship service to a close. We are continuing now with our new worship schedule, and that is online worship at 9 a.m. on Sunday mornings on our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our website. And also in-person worship at 9.30 and 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary. 
Also, in-person opportunities that are resuming once again this Sunday include a fellowship time between our Sunday morning in-person worship services from 10.30 to 11 in the fellowship hall. Also, Sunday school is resuming, led by our youth and family coordinator, Molly Farron. She will be teaching the little ones from 10.30 to 11 as well. At our 11 o'clock in-person service also, I will be offering a children's message. And our Grace Space and our Child Care Center are also open as well. We continue with week three of our Bible study, Renewing Our Minds, exploring Brian McLaren's ebook, Why Don't They Get It? Overcoming Bias in Others and Yourself. We're having some wonderful discussions. You can join us in person Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. or Thursday nights at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Two different options, the same class repeated. You can also join us online Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. The class is being live streamed on our YouTube channel and Facebook page, so you can enter your questions in the chat, and I will answer them during the class. A reminder that our next find food distribution takes place on Saturday, June 19th at 7 a.m. That's when distribution begins. If you'd like to volunteer or for more information, you can send an email to mollyfarron at youth at stjohnslutheran.church. All of this information and more is available on our website, stjohnslutheran.church. Also, in email blasts I've been sending out on a regular basis. If you're not on that distribution list and or if you are in need of prayer or pastoral care, please do send me an email. I'm available. And my email address is pastor at stjohnslutheran.church. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. peace. The Spirit sends us forth to serve. Thanks be to God.